So good morning. Uh, another Tuesday. And uh, Craig, that song was beautiful. And it, was, it was so beautiful that I would like to share the uh, words to it. Um, and uh, I, I got them right here. So let me share these with you. The name of the song was Loving Eyes. And, we, and he, he, he's done at least 22 songs. And he, sometimes he lets me pick out the song I want for the message. And let me pick this out because I really love this. The name of the song is Loving Eyes. And this is what it says. When your life is upside down, pieces of your heart are thrown around. And look to me and seek my face. I'll put the pieces back in place for you. Everyone has a problem or two to work out in their life. I look upon you all with love in my eyes, loving eyes. When you feel like giving up, take a look inside of my book. There is life in every page, and there is an amazing grace for you. So I, I love the words to that. And... Uh, he comes up with these things. They're so amazing and so from the Holy Spirit. It just blesses me before I do a message. I'd like to start out by praying. Our Father who art in heaven, I would be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For, I, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Lord, I, uh, I, I come before you, Lord. And I ask that this message would be something that would glorify and please you, Lord. And uh, I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak through me. And that I would be out of it. And Lord, I, I've also... Uh, been talking with Shane Martin, um, and uh, he's, he's a beautiful man, and, and it's nice to that he shares his heart and that he so, has such a positive attitude on everything. And I know that you are a sovereign God, Lord. I also believe that with much faith, if we pray without wavering, a hundred percent faith, believing that you will heal. You will heal because you are still in the healing business. You are still in the miracle business. And Shane, he believes you healed him. And I, for one, will not disagree with that. I will agree with him and I will praise you for that healing. And as we go forward, Lord, in prayer, I just pray your spirit be with us and that it would be around us. And as it always is, Lord, but give us peace during this message and help us to just glean from the word, and uh, I'll share this message with you leading the way. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. So, here we go. The title of my message is Saul's Foolish Oath. And the point would be that we all need to be careful of becoming prideful, even if it's at different times in our lives. So, I'm going to start out from uh, 1 Samuel 14, 8 to 11. Uh, because I want us to back up. Because two weeks ago, I did 1 Sam Samuel chapter 14. And I want to give a little quick, brief uh, note on that. And uh, then we'll pick up the message in 14 again. All right, so it starts out saying... Then Jonathan said, Behold, we will cross over to the men and reveal ourselves to them. He's talking about the Philistines. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand in our place and not go up to them. But if they say, Come to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has given them into our hands, and this shall be the sign to us. So, as it, as it goes, the Lord was with them. And the two of them were in a battle uh, with the Philistines. They had, I think there were at least 20 or more 
Philistines, and the two of them killed 20 of them in that battle. So it's uh, pretty obvious that um, the Lord was with Jonathan and the Amma Bear. So, but Saul also, he had a battle going on. And his uh, problem was that he didn't know where all his men were. That were he, he could see that battle that Jonathan was in, but he didn't know it was Jonathan the armor bearer. And uh, what he wanted to do was take an assessment of how many men were there. So what he did was call all the um, men together and he took kind of a uh, inventory of what, who was there and who wasn't. And then he recognized that it was Jonathan and uh, the armor bearer that were in that battle. So, kind of get focused a little bit on that. Please, excuse me. So, at that point, Saul asked the priest, who was Hahijah, he asked him to uh, inquire of the Lord and to bring the ark of God with them. And, um, and that's what the... Ahijah was doing. But what happened was, in the middle of it, Saul got distracted by the commotion going on. And uh, his focus, he told him the uh, priest to stop in the middle of a prayer. Um, I can't say that I agree with that, but that's what he did. So his focus basically was on the commotion that was going on in this battle that was going on. And at that point, Saul, well, I wanted to, no, before I say that, uh, in regards to distractions, we all go through distractions at times. There's times that we're praying, there's times that we might be studying for a message, and whatever. But the point is that we have distractions. A grandkid might want to start talking to us, or, or the doorbell rings, or the phone rings, or the cat is scratching at your new furniture. But we all come across distractions. So, Saul was distracted. So, I'm going to read verse 20 and 114. And it says this. Then Saul and all the people who were with him rallied and came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his brother. And there was great commotion going on. So what is happening now, God has taken control of this situation because of Jonathan and the armor bearer. And you can tell that God's in control because the Philistines are actually killing each other. I don't think I could make something like that happen because there was much confusion. But also, all the Hebrews and Israelites that uh, deserted them at one point, they were hidden holes and, and they weren't even into the Philistines' land. They all came back. And it was a, an amazing battle and it, it was over quickly um, because of God, because it was God's plan because of Jonathan's prayer or uh, police, whatever you want to call it. But the, the last part in that verse, before we go on to the new message, it said, the Lord delivered Israel that day and the battle spread into Beth Haven. So I want to... Um, there was a lot of confusion in the camp, as I said. But what, uh, I got to read uh, verse 24. So now the men of Israel were hard pressed on that day. For Saul had put the people under an oath saying, Cursed be the man who eats food before evening. And until I have avenged myself on my enemies. So... What I see here, the men just came out of battle. 
and they have to move forward to go back into battle again. But they are tired, they are famished, they're hungry, and they're, they wanted to eat something. But the curse, he says, curse it be the man who eats food before evening. <laughs> they are drained. They needed something other than that. This actually started to become a personal vendetta for Saul because Saul was about avenging himself. It was about Saul, not about God. But for Jonathan, it was about God. But at that point, they were, a few of the men had gone into the woods. And um, what happened is they saw honey. There was a honeycomb there. But Jonathan was also there. And Jonathan, he took his staff and he put his staff into the honeycomb, lifted it up, put it in his mouth, and his eyes brightened. He was rejuvenated. And he felt like he needed to go into battle. He was actually the captain of the men. So they looked up to him. But they, because of the curse, because they were there, and they yelled out to Jonathan uh, that your father has put a curse on us. And the curse, they were afraid of that curse because they didn't want God to destroy him or whatever it was because they believed probably that Saul had God's, uh, God in mind when he did that. And I don't believe that he did. It was God himself. So, like I said, the men were afraid of that curse and about the honey on the ground. But people, And then the people told him about the oath. So then Saul's pride caused the men to sin. They went back greedily. Saw, they saw uh, animals in the uh, where they had defeated the Philistines. There were animals there. And they went to those animals. And they were so famished and so hungry that they cut them up. And they ate them. And they ate them with lot with new blood in the meat. And that was against the law of God. Because if you look back in chapter 9 of Genesis, when Noah was talking to God, God told Noah, let no man eat any animal with blood in it, or else you will be treacherous. And that would probably mean being disloyal. And um, so that they didn't want that to happen. So people, actually Saul's pride, he caused the men to sin. I would put the blame on Saul because they were hungry. They were famished. And um, they were frustrated with Saul at the same time. So they, they were starving so badly, they had to go do that. They sinned. Actually, Saul was the one that caused them to sin because of his foolish oath. So Saul's pride got in the way. So as far as us, we must know and do his will. And the only way we can really know what his will is, is to get in the word of God. To see about what God says and what the scriptures say. Because as you read the scriptures, and I know I'm a big one for telling you to constantly read because it's so important. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going you're gonna to find wisdom. You're going to get wisdom from it. You're going to actually... Your love is going to increase for God, and uh, you're just going to do things. For him. You're going to want to do things for Him. Your heart is going to become regenerated, and, and and that's what happened to me. Not that I don't have my battles. I have battles. I have a cross crosses to bear, just like everybody does, and I am no one even close to being a a Jesus. But I want to do his will. 
I want to do what I can do. I have a, a concern for the lost, and, and I want to reach out to people, not only for the lost, but to encourage the saints. So that is my heart. And so actually in that war, much could have, much could have, have been done to make it a more uh, positive kind of result. Because you know what happened? It came down to the time when Saul wanted to know who the sinner was. And actually, so what he did, he was going to draw lots. And so he had all the men on one side, and Saul and Jonathan were on the other side. And so they drew lots. And they, it, it showed that the, the men were involved in that. But then it was left with Saul and Jonathan. So it drew lots again. And Saul was relieved. And Jonathan was left as the sinner. Because he took that honey when he didn't even know the curse. So the men didn't like that at all. Because Saul wanted to execute his son. The men didn't like that at all. They got around uh, Jonathan. And they said, nobody is going to execute him. And that will never happen. And uh, that was basically the end of that, church, that uh, verse in that uh, chapter. So I just want to share a couple of things before I close the message. And that would be, where did pride come from? I want to share a scripture with you. A few verses from that scripture. It's Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. And it says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. So, in heaven, Saul, I mean, uh, not Saul, uh, Lucifer, he was a beautiful angel. He was, uh, he had much power, and he was a master of music. And he had everything going for him, except one thing. He had pride. And his pride was that he thought he was better than God. And what resulted was that he got a third of the angels behind him, and he, God tossed him down into the world. And now God uh, put him in the earth and he became the God of our earth, of, of the world. And the problem is that he creates situations. He creates deaths. He, he's out to kill and destroy. He does not like people. He hates people. And uh, the first time I've experienced in hate was when I read in Revelation about him. And I felt, I'll, I'll call it a righteous hate towards him. Because I, he hurts people I love and care about. That breaks my heart when I see people are sick. Because I don't blame God for that stuff. I blame Satan and his demons. So, we got to be careful, especially the people in the world, to not blame God for bad things. Yes, he does allow things to happen, uh, and he does, and it says in James, count it all joy when you go through a trial, but, you know, personally, I blame Satan and his demons for a lot of the bad things that happen in this world. I don't blame God. God is always in control. And if anything, he knows exactly what he's doing because he's sovereign. And he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, the way he wants. It's not about us. It is about him. And you know what I think of? I think of John the Baptist when he said, I must decrease and he must increase. So that's what I want to do. I want to continually decrease and lift him up as high as I can. And so I praise God for all he has done for me and for all the world and what he will continue to do. And what's our, what's our 
end result, we have an opportunity to be internally in heaven with him. And that's what I look forward to. I don't care about the crowns. I care about hugging that man, Jesus. I care about hugging God because I love him that much. So my hope and prayer for you is that you would clean from this message and that you'd be able to take it home and, uh, and gather something special from it. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you are blessed throughout your life. And Greg and I, we love you. And uh, again, we'll be back next week. So look for us. Have a great day. We love you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.